hello. Uh, it's John Lord here in Retout Garden Centre Gardens in mid-August and we actually have good weather for a change. And we've had very dry last few weeks. Now, we haven't had a lot of sun. It's been very dry. There's been little sprinkles of rain, but never enough. So there's been a bit of suffering going on for certain plants. Now, I want to mention a plant that I never mentioned before. I just never had it. That's Perovskia. It was planted a couple of weeks ago. Russian sage. And I'm going to use it much more in the future. But it's really good late flowering. Very uh, little trouble with it. It's kind of like a salvia. Blue salvia. Same family. I'd like to plant phygelius. It would do really well here. The problem with phygelius is that it's it tends to run a lot at the root and it's very hard to control. So you have to be very careful with it. It is a beautiful plant and there's an orange, there's an orange and there's a yellow and there's a sort of a purpley pink. But I'm wary. It would be lovely here. And it would grow really well and fill all that area in nicely, but it doesn't know uh, when it has to stop. So, no, we're not going to bother. I would maybe plant it in the gravel or something, some place like that, or in the corner of the garden where where you only have the lawn or there's a hard surface and it can't it can't run into other plants because it will bully its way into other plants. Now, so that can be a trap for the unwary. Now we do sell it, and the reason we sell it is people have asked for it. So if people ask for a plant a lot of times and you don't have it, you just get it somewhere else. So that's the reason we have it. Now, uh, we just mentioned, we need to do a bit of weeding here. We need to go under here with the, let's see. Two jobs. Two jobs. Oh yeah, three jobs. Yes, Grantia. This time of the year. Be ruthless. Don't be afraid. It will come back. What a strantia is very easy to grow, but what it will not tolerate. It will not tolerate a very dry position. Just will not like it. You can have it in the heaviest, mm -hmm. thickest clay weather spot and it will be perfect, but it will not tolerate dryness. So if it's a very dry part of your garden, don't use Estrantia. Lots of plants for a dry part of the garden, like for instance, Penstemon. That's Penstemon Evelyn, just going off flowering. Now there's two ways to deadhead. It'll reflower if it's deadheaded. That's one way. And the other way is this. Now, you go like that and you sort of bounces back. You don't do this, you sometimes see, if you see anybody on the television cutting the hedge like that, they're not they're not professional gardeners. This is what you do. And in the olden days I would spend day after day at this cutting back hedging before we had the mechanical ones. These are the the ones that were powered. Because they're all mechanical. The powered ones. And we dug a we dug a rose out called Kent because it was getting a lot of black spot and it's reappeared. Is that very cheeky look? It was quite nice. Here we are again. Gabios cut the lot, put the lot down, that will reflower to the end of August, right September, right into October. Cut it hard back. Now that's job number one. Job number two. Oregano, Lavigatum, Turkish Oregano, and I think, and we used to grow, it's lovely, beautiful, but we could not control it, so we have to get rid. And there we are, Vitus vinifera, that's the grapevine. Who says you can't grow grapes in Ireland?
tog plads i kovlerne, det er jo da et avl. I've spent a bit of effort, I've spent a few hours, a typical nerd fashion, trying to figure out which gunner this is. Similarly, there's gunner in Manicata, and there's gunner at Tinctora. And the Manicata is the one you want, because that's the big massive one, because the purpose of gunner, one purpose is to have a massive, massive leaf. So people go, wow. And otherwise, it's just rubber. So we're not sure which one that is. We think it might be the hybrid. There's a hybrid. Seemingly, there's an, you don't get Gunnera Manicata anymore. It's it's a hybrid called Gunnera Cryptica. But hopefully, that's Gunnera Cryptica. But anyway, uh, yesterday, I was out on the place and there was a massive big gunner there. And I asked, I asked uh, any chance for peace. And oh, bloody weed, we far too much for me. Broke off a piece, so I know I have the big one. If this doesn't work, if that is not the big one, but it's a genuine big one because the leaf was that size. So we're going to give that another year, and we, we grow the other one, put it somewhere else in the back. And if if that one by next year, if it's not this size, it's uh, it's it's going to go. And funnily enough, I don't think we're allowed to sell it anymore. I think it's on the. Uh, on the plant, the plant list for uh, invasive plants, so you're not supposed to sell it. So, which we kind of obey the government. If they're not allowed to sell it, we won't sell it. But that's gone right now. I'm trying this. I'm trying to do everything for once in uh, an orderly fashion. So I wrote down what I'm going to do. So the uh, prune philadelphus, cut back for Thormium hydrangea bluebird under stress, cut back astrantia, or cut back astrantia, cut back to pencil level. Now we'll do those two things. Cut back uh, weed around by Bornham, yes. Hydrangea hot chocolate. Hmm. Anyway, we'll move further on. I haven't that heart to cut that away. Butterflies everywhere today. Now, I just read an article in the paper today that was complete there to butterflies. There's no butterflies. No. So, obviously, the butterflies are not reading the newspapers because they should stay at home. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned this again. I mentioned this the last time. It's after it's nearly two inches thick now that's about about six weeks growth what I'm doing here I'm gonna cut one of these back for a reason maybe this one around here. Lazy man's way. And if you look at this rose, flower carpet rose, look at all the look at all the new shoots with young flower buds on them. And we've sorted out. See part of the problem is in nature. Well, this is actually not a good example because this is more or less a single rose. But most roses, there's lots of extra petals. They're called double roses. And then when they finish flowering, you've more stuff to, you've more, there's more petals on the ground. How will this work? Kind of.
funny, I'm just back from the Canary Islands and the street sweepers, they, they use a palm, a palm front for, for really good for sweeping the streets. Most Crocosmias don't have any, there's a tiny touch of pink in that. And I am um, mentioned the Crocosmia maybe two videos ago, and it's called Paul Best Yellow. And I just said, Oh, thanks, whoever Paul is, thanks very much for that beautiful yellow Crocosmia. And I got a nice note from a lady telling me that Paul, Paul is, I can't remember his second name, he lives in the Isle of Wight and uh, he breeds Crocosmia. And Paul's, be Paul's Best Yellow is his. But Limpopo, that's also Paul's. So thanks very much, Paul, for two lovely Crocosmias. Quite a nice combination there, total fluke. Now, two things. The daylilies. Last year, I removed all the flowers when they were still in bud, so we had no flowers, to try and get rid of the pest that's causing trouble to break the life cycle, and it seems to have worked. But what you, oh, look at that. That's a good, I shouldn't have done that. It's a two-handed job. Get rid of the old flowers. Leave the new ones, the new flower buds. Beautiful plant, so easy to grow. I born them. It's, it's Kilimanjaro, I think. Look at how good. It was very good flowers on it. And look at the lovely berries now. You could probably do that. Bring it up a bit higher. Eventually get it up really high. It's worth doing. The, the, blue, the blue poppies, Himalayan blue poppies, that one's not doing. Look, it hasn't produced any offshoots for next year. That one has produced basal growth that one has there and that one has so i think that one's in trouble for some reason the flocks don't like it here very very poor and once again we we have too many carpet roses here so we removed them and look coming back who say who says you can't grow roses easily oh oh hot chocolate very good this year, really, really good. Hydrangea Aspera hot chocolate, really good. Very, we're, as I say, it's very dry at the moment, but I want to just show you, point, show you something about dryness in a second. Not a bother in that, here. And, oh, look at that beautiful miscanthus. Lovely subtle effect. That's morning light. Hydrangea bluebird, and there's a few issues here with the persicaria and lack of water, and because the water's been sucked, sucked out of the soil with those birch. Birch are sucking all the water out. So what do we do? Do we, do we, all the time? Look there, that's the sprinkler. Do we go sprinkling? No. What we're going to do is we're going to dig them all up. Put maybe Euphorbia wolfenii in. Euphorbia wolfenii will tolerate the dryness. But well, they're all coming up. Stone point. Past the point of rescue. As I say, I've no, po I've no problem watering newly put in plants. Or very occasionally water other stuff. But that's just, that's just uh, really 
kind of flogging a dead horse. So we get them up, we got them out, and um, that we do that very soon. I'm not going to do it on camera though, in case it goes wrong. Um, Japanese an enemy. Very good this year. And they're, as I said before, they're a plant that can be in an, that an enemy can be your enemy because they can grow too much. You have to be careful where you put it. It can run a bit this way. Can't, there's no harm here because we can send the gravel and we can we can hold. So, but it has it has colonised a little bit more. Another issue about it, which you'll never hear, if you have it in an area that's nicely contained, I would recommend. As soon as the flowers finish, remove all the flowers. Don't allow it to seed because it will start self-seeding around. It does self-seed. And you don't want it to self-seed in the places that you that it can get out of control. So just put it right back when it finishes. That's a honor, honorary jawbird, I think. The lovely white one. Maybe that aspera there, hydrangea aspera, it's just a little floppy. Maybe the holes for 10 minutes on that be no harm that's all we had a poplar tree we cut it down and uh everything is improving the poplar tree was sucking everything out now what needs to be done here that was newly planted and is it doing that's beeho uh acer beeho you look at the top always look at the top doing really well what what really helped it was very good or very wet March April and May and that really got it established but that's we'll, we'll remove that branch and remove that we we'll move all those branches I'd actually do it now just hang on and we uh, David I'll get I'll get the saw but look at this here that's that was planted, that was removed as well. When we, when we removed the poplar tree, we had to move that out of the way and drop the tree there and put it, put it back. And I think that could be given a water. That was butchered, absolutely butchered, that, that uh, uh, elder black lace. It was absolutely, completely, we had the chainsaw out of it. And look how good it is as a result. Black, black, it's very hard to beat the black stem bamboos. Or black stem bamboos. There's black stem bamboos here. And it's actually one of the bamboos that is very controllable in Ireland because it, it likes a hotter summer, so it never goes mad in Ireland. So it's a good one for Ireland. It's a black stem hydrangea. Always reliable. Now, I don't know what, <laughs> always reliable, I don't know what happened to it. It takes a few years to get going, that will be much better next year. And that's called a persicaria. It's kind of chubby, isn't it, flower? It's called fat domino. Now, we get... We're gonna cut those branches off. First. First things first. how bad it is. That's that started. Never done this in college. And rightly so. Um,
I need that cherries is that you're actually supposed to prune them in the summer. They can get diseased in the winter. You prune them. Alright, here, I'll let you on, but I think it's for Optus to try. Aren't they fantastic? A shady spot. Carry Japonica. It's actually going up through it. I think that's better. Night. I don't know. Leaves of Carry Japonica is very strange, and when it comes to the flower in the early late spring, um, the yellow flowers through the tree. People. Someone actually asked me. I've never known that a tree like that. And I said it's not. It's Carry Japonica. Now, we're nearly finished. Let me look. I, I look, the only reason I look at the mobile phone is I want to be like the young people, you know, because they spend all their time looking at the mobile phone. Uh, we eat around by the hydrangea hot chocolate, I mentioned cut back Astrangia, cut back Evelyn, cut back Polymonium. Oh, true, Philadelphus. Ah, yes. Now, where's the Philadelphus? You have to prune that. I just want to, maybe not, we won't bother pruning the Philadelphus. Get something nice. Oh, by the way, the reason I'm wearing braces is because gravity was getting the better and it, it's the fight against gravity. There is a problem with wearing braces though. I have a friend called James, you see, and that's the problem. If you have a friend called James, don't wear braces because every time he sees me, he goes, hello, John, whack. And it's actually very painful and it's probably illegal. job on these as well. Freshen them up. First thing. One of the, the black stem hydrangeas. I was gonna I was gonna show how to cut it back. You cut you cut you take the longest one, the biggest one out one year and then the following year the next biggest one and you have you don't take them all out or else you miss a year. But everybody is saying, wow isn't it beautiful that tall hydrangea so but basically, we're not going to do anything. We're going to leave it the way it is. Um, the video that we just did three days ago, we're adding a little piece on. We removed 
the hydrangeas. They came up so easily. I could have actually done them on the video without spending half an hour looking like it was a, a miner from, from the 1900s. Um, and we put in three stelias, which love dry shade. They will do really well in dry shade. And they get really big. And we put in one Dryopter citrata and one Euphorbia wolfenii. And the, both of those will do well in dry shade. And then look at the beautiful pink bark of the pink bark birch. Um, we're going to, we've cut every, we have to cut everything back because it's been so dry. We cut, we have to cut all the still be back. You're just coming into flower, but they looked ragged. So everything was cut back. A few little bits we have, we avoided cutting back, but everything. And then we're gonna, we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the watering on for at least an hour because it's only a matter of time before we get our rain back again. But this is just the holding pattern. We put the water, we get this a good water for an hour. And but anyway, I actually think uh, I'm glad we did that. The think is to act, and to act is to uh, feel good about yourself. <laughs>